All right. Hey everyone, it's Michael Zapersky here. I hope you are having a wonderful day. And um, I'm going to share with you a success principle that uh, really can make a, a big difference in times like these. If you are a consultant, a coach, an advisor, a trusted partner to organizations, if you're uh, looking for ways to create new opportunities and to grow your business, uh, what I'm going to share with you in this video here today, I think will really make a big difference. And so this is um, a live and we're, we're broadcasting to LinkedIn and to uh, YouTube at the same time here. I'm just going to quickly log into LinkedIn. Hopefully I'll be able to, to see, but if you're joining live, please go ahead, uh, hit the like button or type in a comment. Let me know that you can, you can hear me, that you can see me. I'm hoping that the uh, audio is, is working properly right now, but go ahead and, and please do let me know. That would be uh, wonderful if you can do that. And I'll try and um, keep an eye out here and, and make sure that I can see. I had a problem last time with, uh, with this, but let's, let's see if we can get this all sorted out here today. All right, looks like we're good. And I'm just gonna turn that off. All right, cool. So uh, I should be able to see your, your comments and your questions because I'm gonna take a moment to start off and just kind of share this principle with you. But before we, uh, or I should say after that, then I wanna open this, this up to q and I wanna spend some time here answering any questions that you all have about growing your consulting business, about uh, you know, what's going on for, for you. And if there's anything that you're wondering about right now, whether it's around proposals or marketing, client situations, um, anything specific to what's happening in you know, the economy in relation to uh, the consulting business, uh, we'll, we'll open this up for, for Q and A. So, um, hopefully we'll, we'll get a few people. It looks like we got, um, all right, more people coming in. Yeah, please everyone go ahead, hit the like button, type a little comment. Let me know that you're joining me. I'm going to try and keep an eye here on all the comments, uh, coming in, but great to see many of you here, uh, with us. So, uh, let's, let's dive into, I'm just gonna take one second. Let's all right, cool. Yeah. I can see there. Um, I'm going to dive now right into the success principle that I want to share with you. And this success, uh, success principle comes from uh, my new book, Act Now. Um, and it's, we talk about in the book, this idea of, uh, you know, you can choose to, to really focus on the negatives or you can choose to focus on, on positives. And the way that we kind of, the, you know, I illustrate this in the book is imagine that every single day, you put on a pair of glasses um, and you can tell that I'm, I'm definitely not an artist, uh, but hopefully you can tell that these are some spectacles. I used to wear glasses a long time ago before I got laser eye surgery. Uh, so I know what glasses are all about, but even if you have perfect eyesight, even if you've never worn glasses before, um, you, you can imagine uh, when you put on a pair of glasses, right? When you put on lenses, uh, it, it can change your eyesight, right? For better or for worse, depending whether you actually need them. But every single day, the one thing that we all have, the one thing that we all share in common is that when we get up you know, out of bed in, in the morning, when we start our day, we get to make a choice. We can either put on our glasses, we can you know, put on our lenses in terms of how we view and how we see the day. And, and we can do that in a very kind of, you know, we'll call it like a, a negative way. We can start to just look at what's wrong why, you know, what, what isn't happening the way that we want it to, how the economy is bad, how, you know, there's, there's the pandemic. Like we can focus on finding negative aspects about, um, you know, many things happening in the world, or we can choose to, to focus on opportunity. So we'll, we'll say this is a minus, this is a plus. And so each one of us has the same choice, the same opportunity. W would you agree? Just type in the chat there. Um, let me know, you know. Would you agree that when you wake up every single day, you can either choose to focus on you know, the, the negative around us and the things that maybe we don't have, or we can choose to focus on the positives, right? What we actually do have, uh, what, we're, what we can be grateful for, and how there is opportunity all around us. And now you might wonder, well, okay, Michael, this, this seems like a fairly straightforward concept. How is it really going to be beneficial for, for me? How is it really going to, to make a difference? Um, well, here's how it'll make a difference for you. Because if you are starting your day and the first thing that you're thinking about is, is negative in terms of you know, what you don't have or what's not working out for you, um, then you will be very unlikely to, to take action. And so another way to think about this is 
let's say that right now you are um, you are where you are, right? You're, you're in the present. So we'll say this is the present right now, this is where you are, and this is, this is the future. This is here, this is like your desired state, right? Or uh, desired outcome. All right, so right now you are here, and sorry, the, I know the, um, the video kind of goes in and out. I'm using a Logitech HD 1080p webcam for this, and it has autofocus. If anyone knows how to turn off that autofocus, let me know, because um, it, it keeps going in and out. If you know, shoot me a message, I'd really appreciate that. But hopefully you can, you can stay with me here. So right now, this, this is the big opportunity. This is, this is really what I want you to take away from this live today, uh, from this, this kind of live you know, broadcast. Every single one of us right now is in the present, right? This is where we are. And we know that there's some outcome that we desire. So this might be from a marketing perspective, it might be landing a new client, it might be a certain you know, amount of cash flow that like, we wanna generate, sales we wanna make, weight that we wanna lose, like whatever, whatever our desired state is. If we decide to wake up in the morning or to start our day and we're focused on seeing things with a negative lens, then what will happen is we are right now here and we wanna get to over here, right? We wanna get to that future desired state. The problem is, and I'll just, there we go, hopefully that's clear now. The problem is that if we use and start by focusing on the negative lens, then what will happen is we will see and find everything that could go wrong between where we are right now and where we want to be. And when you do that, when you focus on the barriers, when you focus on the challenges, when you focus on everything that could go wrong, what happens? Right? Just, just type in the comments, what, what, what typically happens? What happens in, in your experience, right? If you are thinking about, and I would love actually, if, if you would be um, a little bit vulnerable and just open and, and, and share in the comments, what is one thing right now that you really want to accomplish? Um, and, and again, just, it could be anything in, you know, from, the, from your business to personal. What is one thing right now that you really want to, to accomplish, that you desire? What's, what's a desired outcome for you? Just go ahead and type that into the comments, into the, the chat box, either in YouTube or uh, into LinkedIn. I'm just going to try and see if I can see what people are, are typing here. Okay, I'm seeing here. All right, now I'm seeing some comments. Good. Um, yeah, go ahead and type in. What is one outcome that you desire right now? Type that and let me know. I'll try and um, look at the comments coming in. So now that you're, you're, you're clear on it, and just think, even if you haven't typed in, I, it'd be nice if you can type in. We can try and see what other people are, are sharing here. But even if you don't want to, that, that's fine. But think about what is it that you desire? What's that desired outcome that you have? And then if you put on the negative lens, right, it means that you're going to look at all the things that would hold you back, all the things that you may not be, you know, that, that you might run into. And so what happens then is when you focus on the negative lens and you see all these issues, you don't take action, right? You look at all these potential things like this could go wrong over here um, and this could go wrong over here. And I'll, let's just use an example. Let's say that right now you're a consultant and you wanna get more clients. And one thing that you could do is you could pick up the phone and call people right now, right? You could check in, you could see how you can add value, you can see what's going on, uh, you can see how you can serve them, right? But the, the negative lens would go, well, I don't want to interrupt people right now. Um, I don't want to seem salesy right now. I don't know if, if, I want, you know if I know the right thing to say right now. My website isn't ready yet. Um, my logo is the wrong color, right? And you just think of all the different things that could potentially hold you back. And then when you see these, you retreat and you just end up staying where you are. And then you don't actually create the desired outcome. Does that make sense, everyone? I'm just looking at some. All right, Thess. Okay, so Sarah, you're sharing. Tanya, thank you. Tom, Andrew, uh, Peter, Michael. I'm looking at both YouTube here and LinkedIn. Yeah, thank you everyone for, for the comments and sharing there. So with the negative lens, you've identified all these potential things that could go wrong, and then you take no action on them, right? Because it just seems overwhelming. Now. The, the opposite or the, the other opportunity, the other you know, way of, of looking at this is, okay, I'm here right now and I want to get here. And so in order for me to go from where I am to where I want to be, 
And some of you are saying here that might be launching a new business, picking up a new client, uh, figuring out how to connect with prospects. So I'm, I'm looking at some different comments here. Instead, if you focus on the positive lens, right? It doesn't mean that you are completely blind to, to challenges or obstacles or objections or issues that you might run into. Those don't necessarily disappear, but you recognize that, okay, there may be some challenges, but that's not gonna stop me from getting what I want. That shouldn't hold me back because if the desired outcome, if that future place is meaningful enough, if it's valuable enough, if you're truly committed to achieving that, then just know that all the resistance, all the obstacles, all the things that could hold you back, they're normal. It's part of doing business. It's part of being an entrepreneur. Don't look at, at these things. Don't look at all the negative, all the, you know, the challenges as reasons not to do what you ultimately want to achieve. That's what separates the people who are successful in life from those who want to be successful, but unfortunately won't because they're not willing to take the action. The, the people that are successful are always having the positive lens or they're much more, you know, percentage wise, they're focused on, on the positive a lot more than the negative. They're optimists. Whereas the people who want to be successful and will talk about being successful and may even plan to be successful, but will never actually be successful in, in regardless of how you actually define that success, they are the pessimists. They are the people that always spend more time focusing on negative things and on what could go wrong instead of what could go right and how to actually just take action regardless of what, uh, what actually you know, they, they face. And so the optimist, the person here that, that will truly be successful, they know that all these things could potentially exist and could be issues, but they will just go around them, right? You go here, okay, there's another one here. I'm gonna go around it here. There's something here. And they're gonna, it's not gonna necessarily be a straight line, but they're gonna get to where they wanna be. They're gonna reach their desired outcome because they're focusing more on positive. And that's really the issue is that if you put on the negative lens, Right. Actually, I have some glasses here. We can, we can illustrate this better. I have some glasses I got a while back to help with, with uh, working on the screen. How, do you guys like these? Do you like the, the color of these lenses? I heard, I've heard that scientifically there's research that these are supposed to actually uh, reduce eye fatigue and help you sleep better. To be honest, I always feel a bit weird wearing these, so I, I hardly ever wear them. I probably should, but let me know what you guys think of these, these glasses and these lenses. But So I could put these, these lenses on and I could choose to, uh, to have the negative lens. And I can think about how these aren't gonna help me to, to move forward. Uh, and then I'm not gonna end up taking action. Or I can choose every day to wake up, to put my positive lenses on, to go, yeah, there's some challenges. How do we overcome them? And then keep moving forward. And by moving forward, I'm act by, and by actually by, by taking action, right? Which is why we titled the new book, Act Now, right? Is because it's all about acting. Even if the steps that you take don't create the results that you want right away. Oh, now I just put black ink all over the cover. Good job, Michael. Um, <laughs> so um, even right, it, it's even if things aren't perfect, just taking the action, moving forward, that is the most critical part. That is the key to success. That's the success principle that I want to share with you today. And what I want to encourage you to do is to always put your, you know, positive lenses on, when you put your glasses on, when you, when you think about every situation that you're encountering, when you, when you think about where you are and where you want to be, focus on the positive. Don't let all the potential challenges and, and the, the negative things hold you back because the more action that you take, the more success you're going to actually have. So I'm going to pause right now because I want to see if anyone has any questions about this specific topic, but also I'd love to hear if this resonates with you. Does this make sense? Do you see how by taking action, by, by putting on the positive lenses, you can actually uh, make significantly more progress. Hit the like button, put a little comment in here, let me know, I'm gonna try and read through some of the comments. Let me just grab my phone here. See this catch up. Wonderful, all right, thank you, um, everyone that's, that's engaging here. I really appreciate that. Thanks, Anna. All right, and now, uh, as promised, I wanna answer questions that you have. Uh, the first part of the live broadcast today was really to just share the success principle with you, which again, some of you may, I know there's people out there who will look at us and go, yeah, that, that's basic. Um, you know, can that really help me? Is that some, is, that's not so innovative. That's so, that's not so new. Uh, but this, you know, six, true success principles are timeless. Uh, they are simple. They're not meant to be complicated, but they're often so simple 
that many people ignore them. They say, oh, that's so simple. That's, I need you know, the, the new marketing funnel. I need this new thing. And so then they, they ignore what is right underneath their nose. They ignore the big opportunities. Uh, and so this success principle really is simple, but you need to act on it. You can't just sit back and think about it. So let's go ahead now and uh, open up this um, kind of broadcast to your questions because that's the second part and the reason why uh, I want to also jump on here today to see if there's anything that you all would like to kind of talk about. Just let me know, type it in the comment box. Yeah, good stuff, Tom. Thank you, Andrew. Um, and, and yeah, I'll, I'll try and read out some questions here if you all have and, uh, and happy to, to see how I can add some value and, uh, and kind of go through some of this with you all. Okay, so, hey, Chris, uh, is it Daria, Chris Palin, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Yeah, the, the, this will be available. So if you missed some of the earlier recording on LinkedIn and YouTube, once they finish processing, the video will be up there and so you can go back and watch from the beginning. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Sam's saying, yeah, all about persistence and taking action. I'm thinking about a strategy to reach out and add, and add clients. Good stuff, Sam. Let me know if you have a further question on that. I'll try and see here. Uh, Daneed or Danny, um, your name's all, all together, so hopefully I'm getting there. It's Danny. You're saying it's constant. Is constant content creation a must to bring in clients? I have a hard time deciding, uh, where did it go? Deciding whether to ramp up my content or work more on creating individual relationship. Thanks. So really, really great question. Uh, and the answer is that both are, are very important. And it's going to depend, Danny, on the stage of where you're at right now in your business. Uh, if you are brand new, meaning if you don't have any pipeline at all right now, uh, then you will typically see faster results by doing one-to-one, -one, by doing direct outreach. Because again, you know, you, literally today, you can identify here's who my ideal client is. And then by tomorrow, you, can, you could be reaching out to them and having a conversation. Whereas if you post content, let's say you put something up on LinkedIn, there's no guarantee that when you post something that the people that you want to attract with that content will number one, see it. And even if they see it, that they're going to engage with it. And so what we always recommend to our clients that we work with is depending on where you are, it's why it's really important that you look at your specific situation, but depending where you are in your business right now and what your goals are, you, you're going to be having a heavier weight to either content or to direct uh, outreach. And that balance will shift again, depending on what your goals are. So I hope that helps there, Danny. If you've got further questions or just feel free to shoot me a message or reach out and I'll uh, happy to help and kind of see if we can customize some of that, uh, that feedback for your specific situation. Uh, hey, Gary, uh, okay, you're looking to start a consulting business. We have a lot of resources on our site. Um, there's a, lot of, a whole bunch of articles. Actually, if you go to consultingsuccess.com forward slash blog or just go to consultingsuccess.com and click on blog, you can, um, there's a, we got a couple articles. One, we actually, we put up, put up recently. It's a whole guide on how to become uh, a successful consultant and, and actually start kind of that transition from employee and, um, and corporate you know, executive or whatever your role is into starting a consulting business. That's a, a completely free resource, really detailed guide. I suggest that you can start there. We do have a whole program for people that want to go a lot deeper, but you could just start with that guide and I think that'll, um, that'll give you a lot, of, a lot of things to think about. Uh, I'm just trying to go through some questions here. All right, so Gulshan, you're asking, what's the best marketing tactics at the moment? Great question, but it really depends on, on what market you're targeting and also what your skill set is. Um, those of you that have kind of been in the consulting success uh, world for some time, you know that I'm, I'm not one of these people that will come out and say, oh yeah, you know, the only way to, to do something is this, or the best model is, is this, because there is no best. It depends on your situation, depends on what your goals are, depends on who your ideal clients are, depends on what your strengths are. And so there is no one best marketing tactic right now. I mean, I can tell you that direct outreach, getting in front of ideal clients, picking up the phone, calling people works really well and, and probably always will. So does content. If you're doing, if you're creating the right type of content, if you know how to put it out there and how to structure it. Um, but these are two very different things. And one takes typically longer to see results and another uh, can happen faster. But there's a lot of factors that go into play here. So Gushan, I'd say, you know, there's just, it really depends on your specific situation. Uh, but all the things that we've talked about, we've got lots of free resources on the website you can, you can go through in terms of marketing stuff that should help you there. Uh, all right, I'm going to keep going through some questions here. Peter, how to find the first client while still having a day job? Yeah, awesome. Okay, it's a really great uh, question there, Peter. 
uh, check out the, the guide that I'm referring to. If you go to consultingsuccess.com and go to the blog, you'll, you'll see a whole guide that actually gives some very concrete recommendations around marketing and especially if you're transitioning from employee to, to consult. Um, but, you know, number one, just some, um, some suggestions off the top here for you would be, you know, look at even your existing day job. Is there a possibility? Is there a way to maybe make your current employer your first client and transition some work and make that transition there? Another is to look at all the different people that you're currently involved with, uh, vendors uh, or other partners, clients. Um, and then the other thing is just to start, you know, building relationships. So get clear on who your ideal client is and then start, you know, creating and cultivating and strengthening a relationship with them where you can add value. Think of what you can do to, to add value for them. And even though you're not necessarily becoming a consultant or, or launching your, you know, officially your business right now, that's okay because you're planting seeds. And as you do that, those people will start to know who you are. They'll know what you do. They'll know what value you can add. Uh, and then when you're actually made, ready to make that leap, you'll be in a much better position. And most likely as you build those relationships, you'll find opportunities to, to serve and to actually do some work with those people. And then when your income you know, gets to a high enough level or whenever you decide that it's, you're feeling comfortable and ready to, to fully make that leap, then you're going to be in a really good position. So yeah, we've worked with a lot of clients, Peter, um, that are looking to make that transition from you know, employee or corporate to consultant. Um, so yeah, if, if you want, feel free to reach out, shoot me a message on LinkedIn if we're not already connected. Just someone, just let me know and I'm, I'm happy to offer some uh, more detailed recommendations for you. Uh, okay, Chris. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, you're asking, okay, what's the best way to close clients on discovery calls? Uh, great question. And number one, I would say there is mindset. Um, don't think close. Uh, you know, when you, when, you when you have this mindset of you need to close clients, it creates a lot of pressure. And I think it creates the wrong dynamic. It's then about trying to sell to a buyer, sell to a client. And personally, I, I, that's not where I see the greatest results. It's not where, you know, we, as we work with our clients and our coaching program and so forth, where they see the best results. The best results come from identifying someone having, you know, that you can help having a really meaningful conversation with them and then looking at how you can collaboratively come up with the best way to, you know, to move forward with them. And so let's say you have a discovery offer, you have, uh, you know, a smaller size initial project and you know that it'd be a great fit for them. Well, you spend really focus the, the whole conversation on what their challenges are, getting very clear about the value and the problem. And, and then when you present your offer, it should really be positioned so that it's exactly what that buyer has just told you they, they really want. And that makes the whole sales process a lot easier because you don't have to really sell. You're simply making an offer. You're simply saying, well, you know, based on what you just said, these are the issues that you've mentioned that you've told me that it's really important to solve these issues because of these different things and that doing so will have this impact to your business. Um, we have a program that addresses that specifically. Here's the kinds of results that others have found as they've gone through it, so on, so on. Um, and this is what it, what it looks like. Does that sound like it'd be a good fit for you, right? So it's not a hard close. There's no pressure, no weird persuasion. Um, you, you know, you're not twisting people's arms. You're just saying, hey, like we have something that, that could really work well for you. And you position, so again, it's exactly what they've just told you that through that whole conversation uh, is what they want to buy. So I hope that helps, Chris. All right, Sam is saying, um, great question, how to interview, I think. He's saying, I could use my LinkedIn list. I'm a headhunter and starting a career coach and how to interview, I'm thinking during the COVID-19, this would be a great time. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't understand exactly, Sam, what you're, what you're looking to do just from that, that kind of question or comment right there. But what I would say is, yeah, right now that there's massive opportunities for so many people. And that's why coming back to this whole idea of, of the lenses, or I'll put my, uh, my glasses on here to make this even clearer, right? The lenses are, it, this is why this concept is so important because there's people right now who will choose to put on the lenses every single day and they will go, yeah, today they're just, I don't know if people aren't going to respond. I don't, people are busy. I don't want to, I don't want to sell. I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to interrupt, blah, 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 right? They're going to be looking at all the negatives and they won't take action. And there'll be other people who go, okay, uh, yes, there's a lot of bad things going on in the world right now. Maybe I even know someone that's, that's had a, I know, a big medical issue. Maybe I even know someone that's, you know, that's passed away. Like there's, there's terrible things going on right now. And so I don't want to, to try and sidestep that or, or to not, um, you know, just consider that, but you still need to move forward. Right. And, and now is the time to act. Now is the time to identify what you can do because uh, there's always opportunity. 
That's why in every situation, there's always people who, who you know, quote unquote, win and people who lose because there's people who will just try and like step back and not do anything and wait. And there's people who will go, okay, yes, there's some, there's something here that's going on. A lot of people are scared about this. So they don't understand it, but I, I'm going to figure out how I can make it work. And then by figuring out how to make it work, I can benefit because there's others aren't willing to, to, to take action on that. So that's the opportunity. You put on your glasses with a positive lens and you start looking for the opportunity and the value in every situation. And when you do that, right, you create significantly more, um, more momentum in your, in your business. And so some of you I know are posting questions on LinkedIn and, and it looks like my LinkedIn feed here, I don't know, it's, it's frozen up a little bit. So if you could just go ahead and try and type in LinkedIn, just let me know if you have a question or if you can still hear me and see me. Uh, I'm gonna just try and see if that comes in on the LinkedIn feed there. I'm seeing lots coming through YouTube, but LinkedIn, I'm not seeing it as many. Uh, okay, so question here from Anna. Hey Anna, how you doing? Great to see you. How much did publishing your book impact your consulting business? I'm working on a manuscript. So. Um, the, the new book act now, right. Just, just came out. And as many of you know, uh, it's available for, for free or, you know, almost nothing on Amazon. If you prefer to get the, the, the paperback version or, uh, or the Kindle version. Uh, so for us, you know, the impact from the goal behind the book is, is not to make money from the book. Like we, we don't make, you know, we make a few cents from Amazon or, or many people have just got the book for free, like the digital version through going, if you want to get access to it, uh, consulting success.com forward slash act now. Um, completely available there for you. Uh, but, but the goal for us is we're thinking long-term, right? What, 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 the reason what we, that we wrote the book is because what we really wanted to do is to help the community, to, to share principles. And one of the principles that I talked about here, right, is actually comes from the book. And what I did is I interviewed six thought leaders in the space to see, because I know what we're doing, I know what I'm thinking, but I want to see how others were thinking and what other thought leaders are doing in their own businesses and then share that with you. Because I believe that as if we can collect and what, I, and what I found is that the thoughts were very, very um, connected, that almost every single thought leader, every single successful person that I interviewed in the book has the same thinking that, that we do and is applying the same principles and some, some different ideas. And so you get kind of, we share the, the strategies and tactics and the mindsets in the book and, the, and ideas and so forth. But the, the big thing behind it is that, um, yeah, ev everyone is seeing things in the same way. So the book is about helping people and my belief and our belief at Consulting Success is that as we give more value and think of how we can add value and help people, that over time, some of those people will go, yeah, okay, this is really valuable stuff. And, you know, I'd like to work with, with this company and help me to take my consulting business to the next level. So, uh, yes, I believe that there will be a really great impact for us, for, you know, to the business from the book. But this is our third book, right? We also have the book Consulting Success, the book, um, as well as the Elite Consulting Mind. And every single book plays a role, but a book is a long-term strategy. Uh, it's, you know, I would never suggest to expect that you publish a book and to expect you're going to get business from it the next day or even the next week, or maybe even not even the next month you can, but think about a book as an investment that you're making. Think about a book as you are making an investment into the relationship bank account of all the people that you want to work with. And a percentage of those people over time will, will go, yeah, this is really valuable stuff. I feel close to this, to this author. I better understand their, you know, their mindset, their principles, their ethics, their culture, um, the way that they do things. And, and I'd like to benefit from that because. Maybe they know something that I don't know. And rather than me trying to figure out all these different things by myself, I can just benefit from what, from their knowledge and experience and expertise. So I'm going on a little bit here, Anna, but I hope that that helps. Just let me know in the, in the comments there that I would, I mean, I highly recommend writing a book. Um, and in, in our case with act now, we need to move very quickly because yeah, we, we want to make it timely. We want to, to help people now, which is why, yes, we could have done things better in the book. We could have had other things perfect. Um, but we wanted to get it out there. I mean, we're, you know, Anna, we always talk about this idea of imperfect action and um, we, we, want, we want to live that. And so we took imperfect action to get the book out. And it's been really um, kind of gratifying to, uh, to get so many emails, hundreds of emails from people who have just said thank you for the book. And, um, and that's what it's all about. So hope that helps. Um, all right, let's take the next question here. Okay, uh, Amy. Hey, Amy, great to see you. Uh, yeah, you're welcome for the, uh, for this. You're saying question, any tips or suggestions or resources for moving from solo to partnering with someone? Um, yeah, I mean, partnerships can, can, can be great when you find someone that you feel can add a lot of value, but you got to be very careful with partnerships because if you don't uh, outline and get clear on what, uh, you know, what, what the role is of each person, partnerships can also cause you a lot of trouble. So 
typically like the way, you know, Sam, who's my cousin and my business partner in consulting success and has been now, we've been partners in multiple different businesses over the years. Uh, you know, what we get very clear on is uh, kind of defining our roles. Um, you know, what, what is Sam better at? What am I better at? What am I going to spend time on? What's he going to spend time on? And it's the same even for all of our other team members, right? We get very clear on what is the role for each person? What activities are they going to be focused on? Um, but if you're looking at a partner, I mean, you've got to, uh, I'm not going to provide any legal advice here because I'm not a lawyer, but you really need to make sure that you, you have very clear partnership agreements and kind of operating agreements so that you know, because uh, when you start off in a partnership, like at the early stages, everyone says, oh yeah, we can figure out later. Like we're, we're, we know these, you know, we, we know, we know each other really well and, um, and um, you know, we're not going to have any problems, but wait till the money starts coming in, right? Wait till things change. Wait till maybe one of you isn't working as much as the other one. And then how do you handle that? So you got to think through all that stuff beforehand. The advice that I often provide to clients when they ask this question is before you jump into a more formal, you know, starting of a company together or a formal partnership, just work on a few projects together first to see if you really feel like this is something that you want to do long term with that person. Hope that helps there, Amy. Uh, okay, Chris. Uh, great to see you, Chris. You're saying I'm looking to start up and have some existing relationships. However, should I keep focusing on my local market or exploring a global market? Also, is cold calling a good place to start to increase clients? Hey, Chris, um, in terms of, you're asking two questions there, right? With, with regards to the local market versus global market, it, it depends on what your market is. And you know, if you find that you, you're better off, like you can get things moving faster with your local market because you have a relationship there, then, then start there. Um, you know, we work globally. Our clients are all around the world. Uh, and we did, we did that very intentionally because uh, when we started the business, we wanted to be able to run this business uh, from anywhere, right? I want to be able to, to be, for example, in Spain uh, or in Japan and still be able to talk to clients or in Australia and talk like, it doesn't matter where we are because technology allows us to do that. So we were very intentional in developing the business and the model and how we support our clients and the systems and structures. And I've talked about that on a different podcast episode if any of you kind of want to learn more about that. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't know your specific situation, Chris, so it really depends, but I'm a big fan of, of global, but I, there there's many cases where you can still like we have many clients who, who focus locally and are very successful. And then we have other clients who are global and they're also very successful. So there, there's no one way in terms of like what's better, just it'll depend on you and your business. Uh, in terms of cold calling, I'm not a fan of what I, like what's called cold calling um, because no one likes to get a cold call. Uh, what, I, what I do recommend is what, you, what I kind of call like warm calling, right? The idea is that you're not just picking the phone and calling people. That's, that's not your first interaction. So before you just call someone, what I always prefer and what I suggest is, you know, think of how you can add value for those people first. What can you send them? What can you offer them? Can you send them a guide? Can you send them, you know, something in the mail? Can you, you know, connect them on LinkedIn? Like do something first so that the first interaction is not just the call. It's something that comes before the call so that when you do make the call, uh, it's not a cold call. They already know who you are. And ideally you've already uh, given them some value beforehand. Hope that helps. Oh, hey, Chris. Okay. Yeah, great. Um, glad to hear that, that you're in Momentum and that you, you said you took the big leap and left your corporate job last month after starting Momentum. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, reach out. Let us know, Chris, how, how you're doing as you're working through the Momentum program. If we can help, if you've got questions, uh, let us know. We're, we're definitely here to help you with that. All right, Heather, you're very welcome. Uh, great to have you on. Nice to see you here. Uh, thanks so much, Sam. <laughs> I'm glad that, that uh, you're finding this to be uplifting. Appreciate you coming on. Good stuff, Amy. I'm really glad to hear that. Yeah, you're using what you learned in the program and, um, and, and pushing forward. Good stuff. All right. Well, I'm not seeing uh, any other questions right now. I know I didn't know how long actually we'd be on here. I have a bit of time here this morning uh, before jumping into to calls coming up and uh, some clients and project stuff. Uh, so I want to come on and just share the success principle with all of you, hoping that you'll get some value from it and that you can really think about um, just everything that you do, like going forward, really, really start thinking every single situation, try and catch yourself, especially when, you know, you're, you're thinking about um, an activity, an action, an opportunity, whatever it is, just anything in your life, even personally. And if you find yourself defaulting to, to a negative state, you find yourself thinking about what's wrong or what you don't like, stop yourself. Right. And just think about these funny kind of looking orange glasses that I'm wearing and go, OK, orange glasses. Um, what can I do here now to turn my mindset from what's negative and to instead focus on something in this current situation that is positive? 
And when you do that over and over, what you're going to find is that you're going to start to feel better. You're going to start to move forward more, um, you know, with kind of more vigor and, and faster. Um, and I think you're going to see significantly greater results in your business and in, and in your life. So um, thank you all again for coming on here today. Um, appreciate the engagement and all, all the questions and all the comments. If you're on YouTube, please just hit on the subscribe button. You'll get then notified every time that we post a new, um, a new video or if I jump on live. Uh, and if you are joining me right now on LinkedIn uh, and we're not connected, you can either click on the follow button uh, or feel free to shoot me a, a connection request. Just make sure that you customize it. If you're on a mobile phone, you'll need to go to other or click on the little dots and then say add a note for the connection request um, because I get so many that come in uh, and if there's no note, then I often don't accept it because um, I don't know who the person is and I don't know what, what's going on. Uh, so I appreciate a little personal, just let, even let me know, hey, I was on the live broadcast. I'll be happy to accept it uh, and that way we can connect and uh, happy to see if I can add value or share some resources with, with you going forward. But again, thank you all so much for coming on here today. Uh, have a wonderful rest of the day. Have a great uh, weekend. Uh, and again, if there's anything that we can do to support you, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. You can get in touch through by sending a message on YouTube or LinkedIn or go to consultingsuccess.com. Uh, we have a lot of uh, resources there, free guides, articles, the podcast, um, and then also programs if you want to dive into anything deeper. But again, just wish you all the best. Have a wonderful rest of the day here. Take care, everyone. Be safe, be healthy uh, to you and your family. Bye for now.